Imagine you're a gold prospector in the 1800s. You're panning in a river, and suddenly you see a shimmering golden fleck. Your heart races. Is it gold, or is it something else entirely? Welcome to Finding the Crystal Road. I'm your host, Dino. Today, we go to the world of excitement and disappointment. Excitement to find gold, but it's not. It's something else. Often, it was iron pyrite, a mineral that has fooled countless people throughout history due to its striking resemblance to real gold. The scientific name for pyrite is iron sulfide, and its chemical formula is FES2. This means it's made up of one iron atom bonded with two sulfur atoms. It's one of the most common sulfide minerals found on Earth, occurring in a wide variety of geological settings. Pyrite's deceptive appearance comes from its metallic luster and brassy yellow color. When light hits its crystal faces, it reflects with a brilliant shine, just like polished gold. It often forms in beautiful, distinctive crystal shapes. Most commonly are cubes with incredibly smooth, almost perfect faces. You might also find it as octahedrons, which is eight-sided crystals, and pyritohedrons, which are twelve-sided crystals, or even as radiating spherical aggregates. Now how can you tell the difference and avoid being fooled? While pyrite can trick the eye, there are several key differences that genuinely separate it from gold. First is its hardness. This is a big one. Pure gold is very soft, with a mole's hardness of 2.5 to 3. You can easily scratch it with a fingernail or even a copper coin. Pyrite, on the other hand, is much harder, in fact hard as some steel. With a mole scale factor of 6 to 6.5, you'd need a steel knife or a piece of quartz to even scratch it. Second is its streak. This is a definitive test. If you rub a piece of pyrite across an unglazed white porcelain plate, like the backside of an unfinished tile, it will leave a distinctive greenish-black streak, while real gold surprisingly leaves a true golden yellow streak. This difference in color is the dead giveaway. The third test is its density or weight. Real gold is incredibly dense, meaning it's very heavy for its size. If you hold a piece of gold in one hand and a similar sized piece of pyrite in the other, the gold will feel significantly heavier. Pyrite is dense for a material but nowhere near as dense as gold. Fourth is brittleness. Pyrite is brittle, meaning if you hit it with a hammer, it will shatter and break into pieces. Gold, on the other hand, is malleable and ductile. You can hammer it flat or pull it into a wire without it breaking. This is why gold can be shaped into jewelry. Fifth and last is chemical reactivity. Over time, especially when exposed to water and air, pyrite can oxidize, meaning it reacts with oxygen. This can cause it to develop a dull, tarnished appearance, sometimes even forming a reddish-brown iron oxide layer, basically rust. Gold, being the noble metal that it is, does not react with oxygen or tarnish. And here's a look at the visual of a gold piece and a pirate piece side by side. When they're side by side, you can tell the difference. 
So while pyrite might have fooled many in the past, a few of these simple tests can quickly reveal its true identity. Despite not being precious like gold, pyrite is still valued in its own right. Historically, it was sometimes used as a source of sulfur for sulfuric acid production, and it's a popular specimen for collectors due to its beautiful appearance and crystal forms. Let's shift our focus to something even more intriguing the pyrite sun dollar, or the miner's dollar. These aren't human-made coins, they are entirely natural geological formations that look astonishingly like stylized suns or flattened disks. Their inherent structure is purely geological. They do resemble metallized sand dollar, and years ago, People thought them to be imprints of fossilized ancient sand dollars. A pyrite sun dollar is a unique form of pyrite that grows in a distinctively radial disc-shaped pattern. Instead of forming cubes or other typical crystal shapes, the pyrite crystals grow outward from a central point, creating a flattened circular object with beautiful radiating lines. So you want one. Where are they found? Well, you won't find these little guys just laying anywhere. A vast majority of pyrite sun dollars have come from very specific geological environments, almost exclusively within shale deposits and coal mines. The most famous locality for these are in Spartan, Illinois, United States, particularly in the coal-rich mines only between 200 to 300 feet below the surface. They are relatively rare finds and are not found everywhere that you find pyrite. How they formed was a mystery for a long time but the mystery was solved. The formation of pyrite sun dollars is a fascinating example of how environmental conditions can dramatically influence mineral growth. It could take hours to explain the development of how they came into existence, but here is the simplified explanation. Imagine an ancient swampy environment where plants are dying and accumulating, eventually forming coal. Alongside these organic materials, fine muds and silts are also being deposited, which will eventually turn into shale. The key to the dollar shape is likely the confined space in which they grew. Geologists believe they form between layers of soft shale and processing coal, often in very, very thin seams. As organic material in the ancient swamps decayed, it released sulfur. This sulfur, along with the iron present in the sediments, provided all the necessary chemical ingredients for pyrite to form. Remember, one part iron, and two-part sulfur. Instead of growing freely in three dimensions, the pyrite started to form into tiny initial crystals and at a central point within that tight, confined space and under intense pressure, more and more iron and sulfite were supplied and the pyrite crystals were forced to grow outwards in a two-dimensional radial fashion pushing against the surrounding soft shale and coal layers. The increasing intense pressure from the overlaying sediments compacted the shale and it would have further contributed to their flattening, disc-like shape. The crystals essentially grew flat because there was no room for them to grow any other direction. This radial growth creates the distinctive rays that make them look like miniature suns. Each ray is essentially a tiny pyrite crystal, 
that grew outwards from the center. This growing process took hundreds of thousands of years to even hundreds of millions of years. Pyrite sun dollars are highly prized by mineral collectors and enthusiasts for several reasons. They are much rarer than common pyrite crystals. Their unique, symmetrical, and often perfectly circular shape with radiating patterns is incredibly beautiful and visually appealing. They represent a remarkable example of how minerals can grow in unusual and specific ways under particular environmental conditions, offering clues about the ancient earth. So while iron pyrite might be fool's gold and not as valuable as its golden counterpart, the pyrite sun dollar is a true geological treasure. It's a testament to the incredible and often artistic ways minerals can form deep within our earth. Unfortunately, their supply is dwindling. With the closure of many Illinois coal mines, they were once a common byproduct of mining. But now, these shimmering disks are becoming increasingly scarce. You can still find a few of them on eBay. So, in the end, pyrite suns are more than just pretty rocks. They are tangible links to a prehistoric world, a stunning reminder of the immense forces that transformed ancient swamps into these radiant golden disks over hundreds of millions of years ago. Do you have any other geological mysteries you'd like to uncover? If you do, I'd love to hear from you. Just give me a comment and I will do my best to uncover it for you. If you haven't already, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. And I'm Dino and it's been a pleasure to go down this crystal road with you. Namaste.